on fairly short notice. I, I know I sent this memo um, just a little bit earlier this week. My name is Brett McCleffey. I'm the director of business communications for Illich Sports Entertainment. We're here today to preview Sunday's uh, exhibition opener for both uh, Michigan and Oakland here at Little Caesars Arena. Really excited about this game and uh, the college hoop season ahead. Um, just a couple of housekeeping items before we get before we get started for a fairly casual Q and A here. Um, this Sunday's game is going to be benefiting uh, Forgotten Harvest, which is a, a great nonprofit organization here in Metro Detroit. A portion of the proceeds from Sunday's game will benefit Forgotten Harvest, which is a nonprofit food insecurity organization. Their vision is to work with communities to end hunger, create individual neighborhood economic and environmental health. It is Metro Detroit's largest um, food rescue operation. I've heard both Coach May and Coach Campy talk about this great cause, and we'll certainly hear from them here a little bit um, shortly. And then you may have seen a couple of weeks ago um, that both teams were actually at Forgotten Harvest repacking apples and um, you know, just a great initiative to, to give back to the Metro Detroit community. So that's a little bit of the backdrop of the game. And again, uh, we look forward to uh, talking through some of those details as well. Um, before we get started, we'll, we'll, we'll hear from both coaches. Um, as as Wyrout mentioned in the chat there, if you guys wouldn't mind um, just identifying yourself and your affiliation, make sure you're unmuted your line when, when we open the, the floor for questions and then uh, just uh, uh, turn on your camera so both Coach May and, and Coach Campy can can put a name with a face. So with that, um, again, appreciate everybody being here. Uh, we will start with Coach May. Coach, if you want to just start with an opening statement about the excitement of playing in this game at Little Caesars Arena in front of Michigan alums and um, about your upcoming season. Yeah, we're extremely excited to play in front of our fans in Detroit at, at LCA for a, a great cause as well. Um, it's been a long off season, I think, for everyone in college basketball. So now it's it's an opportunity for us to turn our attention to the most important thing, which is the players playing games. And uh, yeah, we couldn't be we couldn't be more excited. Thanks, Coach. Coach Campy, a statement from you, please. Obviously, Little Caesars Arena, no stranger to you and your program. Yeah, I'm just really, really pleased that that Dusty decided to play the game. You know, we we had a conversation when he got the job and. You know, my thing was this was be, this will be the first time Michigan fans will get to see his team play, and why not do it in the uh, basketball in the Detroit area? And so I was really excited that he uh, said yes, and that Oakland's going to be a part of it. I, I think that, as as Dusty just said, we took our teams uh, to the warehouse the other day, and and we got I think opened a lot of eyes on both their players and our players how big that warehouse is and what that Forgotten Harvest does. And and I know my guys reflected on it afterwards and felt pretty good about themselves that maybe they had made a little small dent into, into everything that we're trying to do. So again, it's a tremendous charity. It's a great cause. It's Little Caesars Arena. It's Michigan and Oakland. And, uh, you know, what better way to spend a, a Sunday evening? Thanks to both of you for that. Uh, with that, we're going to jump into questions. Looks like Shep's got one in the chat. Matt, you want to lead us off? Yeah, thanks. And thanks for everybody for doing this. Just a few. First, Brett, do we have video of both teams going to the the, the warehouse, if you will, that we can yeah. access for BTN? Absolutely. Yeah, we okay. can we can certainly pass that along to you and the and the producers. Absolutely. Okay, just just one for each coach. First for Coach Campy. You've been doing this 41 years now. How have you changed over those years? And for Coach May, what are you hoping to get out of this uh for your team Sunday night? Thanks, guys. Well, uh, Shep, that, that's an interesting question because, you know, I think that the game itself has changed so much uh, in the last, you know, two, three years. And, and the advent of the transfer portal, the advent of uh, the NIL has completely shifted college basketball and college athletics in a greater seismic shift than anything that's ever happened in my 47 years in college basketball. Um, having said that, I think personally, I've changed, you know, per periodically through my career. I think we all do. I, I would tell you, you talk to Dusty in six years, he's going to tell you what being at Michigan has done to change him and, and just the game, the evolution of the game, but more the evolution of yourself as a professional. And then on top of that, how the kids have changed, you know, the rules change the game and, and rule changes change how you coach every year. You know, the three point line is been probably the most significant change in the game and how we've all had to change our coaching, but the kids make you change too, you know? And so I'd like to think that, you know, I was a Sparky Anderson, my way or the highway guy, you know, 25 years ago. 
and now I'm probably more laid back and, you know, Steph Curry won the NBA championship and was the MVP of the NBA finals wearing purple shoes. You know, how am I going to make my guys all wear the same shoes and all, you know, you just can't do that anymore. So you just have to, you know, go roll with the tide, enjoy it. And, uh, just let the players play and, and try and keep some semblance, semblance of organization. From our point of view, we're simply uh, we're excited to see our team play. Um, obviously, Oakland, the the success, the history and tradition that the coach Campy's built there. Um, they play a different style, which will prepare us for for you know Big Ten play. Some of the teams in, in our league to play zone, uh, but more than anything else, just the more our guys we're, can play together, the more beneficial it's going to be. Uh, we're a work in progress. We haven't had our roster together for practice because of injuries and illnesses and whatnot. So um, just to see where we are for October, um, I wish we could have played this a, a week earlier just to see um, what the team looks like together. So, you know, we're doing a lot of uh, observation, a lot of learning our, our, ourselves now. So um, there's really no other expectations than to go out and, and, and play as hard as we possibly can and, and develop the, the on-court chemistry that you need on game nights because, uh, you know, obviously there's a big difference between uh, your, your performance and, and the preparation that goes into it. So uh, I'm, me personally, I'm just excited to see our guys perform in front of the fans and, and also uh, to start establishing our, our our identity as a program. Thanks, guys. Andrew Kahn, question for you. Yeah, this is for, I guess, anyone who knows the answer, which is like, how did this game come about? Both um, the opponents, um, the fact that it's at LCA, and then the, the, the charity component as well. Go ahead, Coach. All right. So the NCAA at, at the Final Four, the NCAA uh, at the coaches meeting, they proclaimed that they were going to allow Division I institutions to play exhibition games against other in, NCAA inst, Division I institutions, where you couldn't do that in the past other than if it's a charity game. So when I heard that and Dusty had just gotten the job at Michigan, I called him on the phone and I, I had this idea to have his first game be at LCA, play Oakland, and we had what we wanted to do with the funds. Um, so Dusty was thought that was a great idea. We talked about it. Howard Handler, who is the, uh, the head of 313 Presents, uh, is a good friend of mine. We I had talked to him about it before I called Dusty, so I put Dusty and him together. Um, they discussed the, you know, inner workings of it and came up with, yes, we're going to do this. And then we got uh, a blow against it when the NCAA came back and tabled that we could do this. So Dusty actually texted me and said, do you still want to try and get around it? And I said, hell yeah, I do. And we put our minds together and came up with, well, let's do it. Uh, but let's do it to a charity. And Howard's the one that came up with the charity. Um, I, I, I don't know how that went down with Michigan, but he just called me and told me that this was the charity they'd like to go. And what were my thoughts? And well, I, that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm American Cancer Society and homeless are big, big when, in the things that I back. And so it fit what I wanted to do charity wise. Obviously it must've fit Michigan too, because, you know, within a couple of weeks we decided to do it and, put all the works together and, you know, Oakland's not getting a thing out of this game. I, I believe Michigan isn't either. I'm not, I didn't see their contract. So I would be speaking out of tune because I didn't see it, but I'm guessing they're getting the same thing we're getting, which is nothing. It, it, we're doing this uh, as a charity event and we're doing it to, for me, we're going to get a chance to play against the university of Michigan, which is one of the, biggest names in all of America, all in the world, as far as merchandise. I think Michigan sells more merchandise than anybody in the world. So for us to be on the same stage of them was a win for us. And, uh, and also I, I think it's cool that, you know, we're going to play against Dusty in his first game and, and uh, you know, I, I want all the best for Michigan. I want Dusty to win every game he ever plays. So, um, you know, that, that's just how I am about the state of Michigan. So, I think it was a win-win from Oakland's standpoint. From, from our point of view, it, it every 
scheduling decision comes down to, is it good for our guys, our players? Is it good for our program? And then is it good for the game of basketball? And I think coach and I would both love to continue to grow the game in our area, uh, to, to attract more fans to our universities, to represent our schools. And so it made sense on all the, all fronts. And now with the big 10 uh, expanding across the country, we didn't want to travel too far. So it made sense on all fronts. And then factor in Oakland's magical run last year, and it, it, the first opportunity for us to play in, in Michigan to be an LCA um, was was just unique on all fronts. Um, it's as far as the the charitable components, we we looked at a few out of Ann Arbor that you know we're very close with, but it made more sense to go with a a, a, a group out of Detroit to to benefit those in the area we were playing. So um, you know, we're, like I said, we're proud. Our guys, they, they it was a great team bonding experience. It was nice to see the Oakland guys at the warehouse. Um, things like that are, are you know, they're, they're, we're building memories, we're building relationships, we're building connections. And I think things like that, um, you know, are, are going to pay dividends later on. Um, but more than anything, there's, there's really no downside to the game. Thanks, the, the, I should say the only downside is typically if we would have played a scrimmage, we could have played about 60 or 80 minutes. Um, <laughs> but uh, with, with being a, a, a true game, we'll only get to play 40. So that's that's the only downside. That's right. No running clock on Sunday, right? Uh, let's go to Kellen Voss with Mason Brew. Uh, hey, Kellen Voss with Mason Brew here. Thanks for doing this, Coach May, Coach Campy. Uh, Coach May, I got a question for you. Uh, you alluded to the group not being together much uh, as a whole with various injuries and tweaks and whatnot. Uh, is the full roster going to be available for this scrimmage, or is anyone going to be held out with various injuries and whatnot? Justin Pippen will be held out. And then we have a few others that, that are day to day. Um, fortunately, they're all, they're all just knickknack injuries. I think um, most college players now, it seems like most teams are, are having these same issues. And uh, because our season's so long, because our most meaningful games are in, in February, March, and hopefully April, that uh, we're, we're definitely not playing guys through minor injuries and we'd like for them to get back to being a hundred percent. So I think all of us, we're all works in progress. We have guys that we're still trying to learn them and them learn us. So, uh, but yeah, we'll be close to it. Just missing one freshman guard as of today. Thank you. Jeff, circle back to you. Coach May, uh, what has been your strengths and weaknesses of your team early on and what's impressed you most about the way your team has been able to come together especially knowing that they're relatively new to one another and uh, and trying to create that bond with you and your staff. I'll start with the latter. They, they've been very intentional with each other as far as developing relationships, as far as how to communicate with each other, um, and, and also just earning each other's trust and, and uh, by being reliable, by being dependable. Um, as far as what the, we've done that, that uh, the staff's really liked or appreciated, we, we share the ball. Um, we have a team that, that puts in the, the time in the gym. They, 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 uh, they put the elbow grease in. Um, as far as the, the things that are concerning, um, you know, we, you never know how well you're going to rebound the ball and, and take care of it until you see someone else. So um, I think those are probably the two things that, that keep a lot of us coaches up at night just wondering and until you've done it, you don't know. So, uh, but overall, we've just been pleased with, with how well our group has, has worked together. Evan Blanchard. Yeah. Hi coaches. I'm a, I'm with, with the Oakland post coach may, I wanted to ask you um, with having a, you know, being in a totally new situation, something that you're not unused to, you've been in this spot before when you're looking to assemble the roster of all new guys, what sort of things are you looking for, you know, to set, you know, the very first core year at Michigan going forward? Is that as much of a thing that matters anymore with all new guys coming in every year? And also, how does Vlad Golden fit into that with the experience you've had with him? Well, Vlad obviously is, is an anchor on a lot of fronts for us. Um, he's a hard worker. He's a great teammate. He sacrifices for his, his teammates literally every day, uh, every possession of the game. Uh, he, he wants to win. He wants to support his, his guys. Um, as far as the other things, absolutely. Michigan's a place that we've, you know, we we learned it from Coach Beeline. He's spoken with us several times in, in the, the theme of all of his messages where you have to get guys that are right for Michigan. And so we we have to uh, recruit players that that want to be students at Michigan that want to represent this place and 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 fall in line with the culture here. 
And so as, as far as us as a staff, we, we need to be around uh, guys that are, are high achievers. They want to be the best they can be. They want to achieve greatness and they want to chase that every single day on the court, in the classroom. Um, and, and we really, really have a growth mindset. Very, very little what we do is outcome based. And so we have to have guys that, that want to uh, chase the same things we were, we do. And that's daily improvement. Let's go to Rayfell Davis with Big Ten Network. He'll be on the call with Shep on Sunday. Hey, what's up, Coach? How you doing? Hey, Raphael. Hey, just a question about that. Just a quick follow up. How much does it um to mean to you or mean to the program to have Coach Beeline kind of back behind behind the scenes, kind of talking to the team and being a part of what you guys doing? I think I heard you say like some of those former players are starting to come back and starting to trickle back into the locker room. What's that been like? Well, obviously, they're a great resource for our players and, and their development, and, and it, it, it ties you to something great. When you see the, the amount of NBA players and, and Big Ten champions that um, have walked in the same locker room, have walked down the same halls as you, it's inspiring. Uh, for me personally, I was always a Coach Beeline fan, um, even before that I, before I knew him. Uh, I followed his teams. I studied his the, the way he did things offensively, defensively, his tactics, and then just seeing how invested he is in, in, in Michigan and how much this program means to him. And it, he's been a great resource, whether it's learning new things or just reaffirming what we already thought. Um, but just to see how much success that the program had in very recent times is it gives you hope that you can get back there sooner than later. I uh, appreciate it. And then one more coach, just um, when you look at your roster and you look at, think about Ruben Jones and Trey Donaldson, have one of those two kind of separate themselves from each other, or do you kind of see them both being in the backcourt together? Um, I could see them definitely playing together at times. Uh, Trey's been our primary ball handler in practice with with LJ Kason getting the the secondary duties or on the on the other team. Ruben's just a guy that you can kind of plug into any spot. Um, he shot the ball really well. Um, he's had a few uh, minor injuries, so he doesn't have the the volume that Trey does right now in practice, which hopefully throughout the, the season will, will, will be very beneficial. But Ruben's just a guy that I think we can plug and play in any situation, big lineups, small lineups, and then he'll be a, a playmaker. And we don't we don't typically play like uh, I think a lot of teams do with a traditional point guard. We like to have three or four different, uh, I guess, and even Danny Wolf has been a – he's been a primary handler in our offense. So we like to have multiple guys. The point guard obviously has to get us organized and, and be the voice on the court, but for the most part – uh, we like to have three or four guys out there like those two that can dribble pass, shoot, and make decisions. Looks like Chef's got another question. Just a reminder, guys, if this is an open forum, so feel free to, to chime in. Don't necessarily need to use the chat, but we'll go back over to Chef here. Oh, sorry about that, Brett. Uh, I promise no this will be my last one. One for each, Coach. Uh, coach Campy, you, you preach to your guys 40, 60, 80, and it's about percentages. I'm wondering if you could explain that for us. And then Coach May, taking on an Oakland zone defense that is kind of rare. I mean, it's it's a unique style. I'm wondering how that helps prepare you for your regular season schedule. Thanks. Yeah, I, I, you were at practice today, and you heard me yelling about that. It's it's just a different way to talk about what Dusty was talking about. You you know, rebounding it, it keeps you up at night, right? That's you heard Dusty say that a little bit, and uh, especially when you're his own team. That you know, and what I try to get across to my players is that statistically, analytically, no matter if you're a good defensive team or a bad defensive team, the the first shot is about a 40% shot. Anytime a team gets a second shot, that's usually a 60% shot. And if they get a third shot, it's usually right by the rim and it's an 80% shot. So, you know, if, if you, it's just a different way to beat into the heads of your players that every time a team gets an offensive rebound against you, you can be the greatest defensive team in the world. You could, you could, take them out of their offense. You can make them run the shot clock down. You can make them do exactly what you want them to do. But if you can't get the rebound, <clears throat> your shooting percentage is going to go up. And I think the analytics show that the team that shoots it at the highest percentage has the greatest chance to win. And so that's just another way, Shep, of, of saying what Dusty said earlier. It keeps you up at night if you don't know if you're going to rebound or not. And we haven't played a game, and I think we're going to be a hell of a rebounding team. But we won't know until Sunday. What was the question again? I'm sorry, I, I was listening to Coach. I was trying to get a, a, a few scouting tips. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's okay, Coach. I was wondering, with his unique zone, um, how does that help prepare you for the regular season schedule, do you think? 
Well, when you're, when you're, when we've played exhibitions, we've always tried to play teams that are a little bit different than everyone else. Um, and, and we try to, and if we try to play a little bit differently defensively, uh, if there's a tie, then what do the fewer teams do that way? Our opponents aren't seeing it every day in practice or seeing it regularly in practice. So we thought the zone, obviously they, they do a great job of getting you out of rhythm. Uh, they're different shots, different spots, different rhythm shots than you're going to get most of your other games. And we're going to see a few other teams. So we did think we'll be able to refer back to some of the lessons we learned in this game later on. And that's why the exhibitions are, are so important. We don't want to go play ourselves. We could do that in practice. So we want someone that has a contrasting style. And, uh, and, and our goal is to be one of the most efficient offenses in the country. And if we don't get second shots, if, if you don't get second and third shots, then you're not going to be that no matter how well you shoot it, no matter how well you get in the paint, whatever the case, if you don't offensive rebound and get extra possessions, get more shots, you're not going to be an elite offensive efficiency team. So, um, it's a battle of wills, hopefully with our size and, and our shooting ability that we'll be able to, to, to get on the offensive glass and, and, and things like that. But like coach said, you never know until you play the games. And that's why we're so excited to see where we are. All right. Thanks guys. Sorry to, to, to bog this up a little. No problem. Coach yeah, Camp. We appreciate, we appreciate the questions. Any, any final questions for either coach Campy or coach May? I have one for coach Campy. Go for it. Great for uh, coach. Uh, coach, the last couple of seasons, I mean, you guys, have, you guys normally have an all conference guy. And then when you look at your season from last year, a guy coming back will be DQ. Has he kind of, has he stepped into that leadership role? Has he is he kind of you looking at him as your guy this season? Um, you know, that's a hell of a question because we've we're second all time right now. And I'm bragging a little bit by saying this, but we've had a first team all league player for 18 consecutive years. And the only school that's ever done that more is Gonzaga. Um, so we're kind of proud of that. And our all league preseason thing came out the other day, and we didn't have one on the first team. And I was a little surprised that DQ wasn't on the first team just because of our history. And, you know, we're the defending. We won the regular season. We won the, the tournament, all that. So I was a little surprised by that. Maybe it's motivation for him. But, um, you know, he averaged eight a game for us last year on a team that was dominated by, you know, Jack Golke and Trey Townsend. So that's pretty good. And uh, um I think he is an all-league level player. I hope I have two or three that are. You know, usually if you're going to – win a championship, you've got to have two, three or four of the best players in the league. Uh, just works that way every year. So, um, yeah, I think DQ is capable of being all league. I think uh, Alan Matu Matubik is, is uh, capable of being all league. I think Baru is capable of being all league. And then we got a transfer from Cleveland state named Jason Woolridge and uh, Woody, Jason Woodridge and J Woody can really shoot it. And he's going to fit into that Jack Golke role for us. And, you know, Golke was the sixth man of the year for us last year. And and uh, Woody might be that, too. So I'm excited about our team. I just don't know who's going to be the alpha dog, like like Dusty just said, until you've been there with three minutes. To go. I just hope the game's close so I, I can see what happens in the last three minutes and see who steps forward. Thanks, Coach. Anything else for these guys? I, uh, I'll jump in here. Uh, Griffin Beers uh, from the Horizon Roundtable. Uh, for both you guys, um, Oakland and Michigan State, really good relationship um, scheduling-wise, you know, playing every year and every other year at LCA. Do you guys foresee your two programs having a, a similar kind of relationship in the future? We, we've, ac we've actually already discussed it, Griffin. Um, with us, I, I don't know the, the longevity of the Jordan Brand Classic and and some of these other events, but um, this is a great gauge for us this first year to see how it goes, to see how well it's supported. But um, it makes a lot of sense on a lot of fronts from our end. Um, but with with the ever changing uh, college basketball landscape, uh, it's hard to commit right now. But um, we're definitely intrigued going forward. Yeah, Griffin, if you want to add to that, yeah, I, we've talked about it, and and it's Dusty's been great. And we've talked to Howard about the the doing it at the, you know, little uh, Caesars in the future, too. And those conversations will be had. Uh, but I think that what people, fans don't understand is, you know, football, they schedule eight, 10 years out in advance. We can't do that. You know, I mean, the Big Ten could go to 24 teams next year. And then how many league games are they going to play? And then what makes sense 
you know, our league could add a couple teams and we could go to 22 or 24 league games and what makes sense in the non-league scheduling. So I think both Dusty and I agree that this makes sense and it would be a cool thing to do. And I, in our conversation, I felt he said that he would like to do it and I would like to do it, but that doesn't mean it can happen. And it's not something that you can just plan. We've got to see how the year goes and what happens in the landscape of college basketball. And then again, what's best for Oakland, I have to do. And what's best for Michigan, Dusty has to do. So hopefully we can get together, but we'll see. Thanks guys. I think that's a great place to wrap it up. We appreciate your time this afternoon. Looking forward to seeing everybody on Sunday. Just a reminder, 5 o'clock tip on Sunday from Little Caesars Arena. Tickets are available at 313presents.com. So thanks, Coach May. Thanks, Coach Campy. And thanks to the media. We look forward to seeing everybody on Sunday. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Thank you.